What is going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. So in this video today, I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step tutorial of how Robinhood works for a complete beginner. I'm going to show you a lot of different things in this video and I also am going to include timestamps down below. That way, if you want to skip ahead to a certain section of this tutorial, you are more than welcome to do that. But just to give you guys a general idea of what I'm going to cover to make sure you're in the right place, I'm going to talk about the free stock or offering from Robinhood and how you can get a free share of a stock just for signing up. We're going to cover what stocks and ETFs are available for trading in the Robinhood app and how to find different stocks that you may want to invest in. We're also going to cover crypto trading and options trading. I'm going to actually purchase some crypto and purchase some options just to show you guys how you go about doing that. We're going to go over a uh, overview of the cash management product that Robinhood has if you're looking for high yield savings. We're going to talk about how you find different investments within the app, how to create watch lists, how to take advantage of fractional shares, uh, dividend reinvestment, different account types, as well as setting up recurring investments through Robinhood and whether or not you may decide to pay for a Robinhood Gold subscription. The good news is Robinhood is completely commission free with no monthly fees or anything like that associated with your brokerage account. The only thing that you may decide is whether or not you want to pay that $5 per month for that gold subscription. But the good thing is you don't need it to have all the functionality and free stock trading and options trading and all that good stuff that they have to offer. That being said, guys, let's start with our first section here, which is what is the free stock offering on Robinhood and what is that all about? So how does the free stock offering with Robinhood work? Well, basically, if you open up a brokerage account with them and fund it with any amount of money, you're going to get one completely free stock worth anywhere from $2.50 up to $200. It is a lottery type system, so odds are you're going to get a lesser value valued stock, but if you're lucky, you might get one worth up to $200. In order to get that free stock, you have to open the account and then you have to fund it with any amount of money and then you're going to get that completely free stock issued. If you guys want to support me for putting this video together, you're more than welcome to use my affiliate link down below, uh, which means that I may earn a small commission in the process. But of course, guys, that is never expected, but always appreciated. So that's the first step here before trading stocks with Robinhood is you have to actually open up an account with them and that's going to involve you supplying them with some information like your social security number, uh, where you work, and things like that because you're opening up a investment account which is going to have to be reported to the IRS. So number one, they do have to verify your identity and make sure you are who you say you are. And then number two, they're also going to have to report any trading activities to the IRS because you are going to owe some taxes on dividends and capital gains and different things like that. So right off the bat, a lot of people are often cautious when an app is asking them for their social security number or things like that. But this is going to be a full blown financial account here. So you are going to have to supply that information. But Robinhood collects this in a secure manner and doesn't store this information about you. So that's the first step is opening up that account and grabbing that free stock. Now let's talk about what stocks and ETFs are available through Robinhood. So through the Robinhood app, you're able to trade stocks and ETFs as well as options and cryptocurrencies 100% commission free. However, what you're going to find is that not every stock or ETF or investment that trades on a major exchange is available for trading on Robinhood. But the good thing is the majority of stocks and ETFs that people are looking for are available through Robinhood. So that being said, let me go ahead and cover what assets you're going to find on Robinhood. First of all, US exchange listed stocks and ETFs. Those are major companies like Apple, Google, Tesla, companies like that. And also popular fund investments like VOO or the Vanguard S&P 500 index fund. You're also going to find options contracts for US exchange listed stocks and ETFs. 
If you're looking to buy some basic call and put options and even some more sophisticated ones, those are available here on Robinhood and we'll discuss those a little bit later. You're also going to see ADRs available or American Depository Receipts, which is going to support trading for over 650 globally listed companies. So if you want to invest in some of these big companies that are trading outside of the United States, you may be able to do that through Robinhood if those companies are supported. Uh, that being said, you're not going to find the following assets on Robinhood. First of all, foreign domiciled stocks, select over-the-counter stocks. So basically, these are companies that trade on less desirable exchanges, uh, oftentimes trading for a few pennies per share. So if you're looking for over-the-counter penny stocks trading for you know next to nothing per share, you're not going to find those on Robinhood. However, I would caution you to stay away from those regardless because penny stocks don't typically make for the best long-term investments. You're also not going to find preferred stocks or mutual funds on Robinhood. You're not gonna find bonds or fixed income investments. However, you will find some bond investments through ETFs. So if you're looking for like a Vanguard bond ETF, for example, you're able to purchase that on Robinhood. You just can't purchase bonds directly. They also do not offer stocks that trade on foreign exchanges, but that's pretty common for most commission-free brokerages out there. And then some less common things here, you're not going to find closed-ended funds, limited partnerships, royalty trusts, tracking stocks, New York registry shares, or units on the Robinhood app. The good news is most of what people are looking for is available, but if you're looking for something specific and it's listed on this, uh, then you may have to find a more sophisticated brokerage that may charge commissions, but they also will likely have a wider variety of assets available for trading. All right, so next up here, let's talk about Robinhood Crypto and more about where this is available to investors and uh, who is and is not able to use Robinhood Crypto, as well as what actual cryptocurrencies are supported on the app. So Robinhood is unique because they offer commission-free cryptocurrency trading, and there's not a lot of other uh, apps and financial companies offering this. So that being said, if you are able to purchase Robinhood uh, cryptocurrency, which we're going to cover in a second, um, these are the available cryptocurrencies. You can purchase Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin SV, Dogecoin, Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, and Litecoin. And that list does change from time to time, so you're going to want to keep track of that if there's a specific cryptocurrency that you are looking for. Now, if you're looking for data on cryptocurrencies, they do support real-time data on the following cryptos, but you are not able to trade them. This list includes Bitcoin Gold, Dash, Lisk, Monero, NEO, as well as Omnize Go, Qtum, Ripple, Stellar, and Zcash. So you can get quotes on those cryptocurrencies, but you're not able to actually purchase them through Robinhood. That being said, guys, there's a long list of states that support Robinhood cryptocurrency. It's too many for me to cover in this video, but I can include a link down below with a website here that shows you what states support Robinhood cryptocurrency, but I'm not going to waste your time by reading off a list of like 30 different states here. So most states are supported, but if you want to check and make sure, go ahead and check out down in the description below. So now let's talk briefly about the options supported on Robinhood before I actually jump into my phone and purchase one as a live demo here. So Robinhood offers options tradings with no commission fee to buy or sell options. There's no monthly fees and you also do not need to have any form of paid subscription in order to trade options or cryptocurrency for that matter. Anybody with the basic and free account is able to trade these things. However, you do have to request access to options trading where you're going to have to fill out a questionnaire about your individual trading experience. Based on your experience level, Robinhood will decide what types of options they want to allow you to trade because options are a very high risk and speculative investment where the majority of people who trade them lose 100% of their money or more. So I'm not here to tell you to go buy them or not to buy them, that's up to you to make that decision. But I just want to give you information about the options on Robinhood.
Typically speaking, when you're trading options on other brokerages out there, you're going to pay a couple of different fees, such as base fees, exercise and assignment fees, and per contract commissions. With Robinhood, none of those such things exist. So if you're looking to trade options and do it in the cheapest way possible, Robinhood is a very solid pick for this, um, but you may find that some of the more sophisticated option types may not be available through Robinhood, but they do have a very good selection of order types and types of call and put options um, that you may be interested in. And I'll show you guys what those are in a little bit. So now what we're gonna do is actually open up the Robinhood trading app on my phone, and I'm gonna show you how to fund the account and then how to buy and sell some different assets. Alrighty guys, so here we are inside of my Robinhood app. And as you can see, I have $146.47 of cash, and I don't actually have any shares of stocks or ETFs or anything in this right now, just because I'm using this for a demonstration purpose. But that being said, guys, the first thing I wanna cover here is how to get money into your Robinhood account. And this is going to require you to link a bank account. Now, I already have my Robinhood account linked, but what I wanna go ahead and do is move some more money into this account that way you guys can see what that process looks like and it also is going to show us something interesting called Robinhood instant deposits so in order to do that what we're gonna do is go over to the person icon after you click on the person icon you're gonna go over to transfers and this is where you have a couple of different options number one you can transfer to Robinhood this is where you would transfer money from your bank to your Robinhood account all right, this is what we're going to do first because this is how we get money into the Robinhood account for trading. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and click on that and then we're going to choose the amount of money that we want to move from my bank account to my Robinhood account. Now you can link multiple banks too if you have a lot of different bank accounts. Um, I just have one main account that I use for funding my brokerage accounts that I already have linked. So let's say for example, I want to move $100 from my bank account to my Robinhood account. I would type in 100, I would click review and submit. Now, the big difference between Robinhood and other apps out there is that a lot of trading apps would not let you trade with that money until the deposit has settled, which as you can see, I did this on January 8th and that would not be settled until January 11th. However, with Robinhood, you have instant deposits up to $1,000 for everybody for free, which is a really cool feature. So you can actually invest that money right now and not have to worry about fund settlement. So now our balance for investing has gone up to 246.47, even though that money hasn't necessarily settled yet. So that's something really cool that Robinhood does. Now I wanna show you how to move money out of your Robinhood account. So let's say for example, you've placed some successful trades, you made some money, and now you wanna move some of your cash out of your Robinhood account. What you would do is you would go back to that person icon. You're gonna click on the same menu there, which is transfers. But this time you're going to transfer to your bank, which means you're taking money out of that Robinhood account and putting it back into the linked bank account. So let me go ahead and do that quick here. And I actually don't have any money available to do this because none of my deposits have actually settled. So if my deposits had actually settled already, I would just type in the amount. You can see the box there that says $0 available any settled funds would be available for moving out and you would pretty much just set, type in the amount of money you're looking to transfer out, click review and click submit. And that's going to happen over the next three to five business days. So unfortunately, I can't show you guys that whole aspect of getting money out of Robinhood, but that is the exact step-by-step -step process that you would follow. Lastly, while we're here in this menu, I want to talk about scheduling automatic deposits. That would be if you want to put like, you know, 10 or 20 or 50 bucks per week into Robinhood. You can schedule automatic deposits. That way you have money coming in one time, weekly, twice a month, monthly or quarterly. But then you would have to actually direct that money yourself and choose where you're putting that money in terms of purchasing investments. So anyway, guys, that covers the banking side and how to get money in and out of your Robinhood account. What we're going to do now is show you how to purchase your first stock on Robinhood. So in order to purchase a stock on Robinhood, the first thing you have to understand is what stock you actually want to buy. So let's say, for example, you've done some research and you decided that you want to buy one share 
share of Ford stock, for example. Well, now let me show you how to purchase one share of Ford. What you're going to do is you're going to go to the search bar and you're going to type in either Ford or the symbol, which is just F. So let me type in F and then I'm going to go ahead and click search. And as you can see, Ford Motor shows up immediately. So if we click on that, we can see that Ford is currently trading at $9 and one penny per share. And so now if I want to buy one share of Ford, all I'm going to do is click on the trade button and I'm going to click buy. So I'm just going to buy one share of Ford for demonstration purposes. So this is where you decide how many shares you actually want to purchase. And by default, it's going to be a market order, which means it's going to close at the current market price at this instant point in time. So at any point in time, when you're looking to buy a stock, you have buy orders and sell orders, and that's going to determine the quoted price that you're most likely going to pay. But what you actually pay might be a little bit different based on what the order is actually executed at. But if we go over here to this drop down, you can see where you have also the option to buy in dollar amounts or buy in shares. I'm going to purchase in shares, but if you want, you can also do fractional shares on Robinhood and just buy it in dollar increments. There's also different order types you can utilize if you're looking to have some advanced order types. However, I never ever use these and I simply just, you know, put my money in through a market order and I always sell through a market order as well. But maybe in another video, I can go over some of these advanced order types for those of you who are interested, but I never use them. So I don't want to confuse you here. The other option you can set up here is recurring investments into this stock. So if you wanted to put money into Ford stock every single week on a recurring basis, you are able to do that. But the market's about to close. So let me go ahead and execute this order. So I'm looking to buy one share at a market price of $8.99. Click review and then swipe up to submit. And then you're going to see them close that order. So one share of Ford was just purchased at $9 per share. So now it sounds kind of silly, but I'm going to turn around and sell that share of Ford stock just so you guys understand how that works. So now let me go ahead and cover how to sell a stock on Robinhood. I have that one share of Ford that I just purchased for $9 per share. And so it hasn't really moved at all because I just bought it, but I'm going to go ahead and sell it now for demonstration purposes. So if we go to my homepage, you can see what stocks I own. I have my one share of Ford and let's say I just decide, Hey, I changed my mind. I want to sell this stock. You would click on that stock and then you would click on the trade button. And then you have the option to sell at this point because you own shares of Ford. So you click on that sell button and you type in how many shares you're looking to sell. I only have one, so we're just gonna sell that one share. And again, if you click on this drop down here, you can also sell in dollar amounts or sell in whole shares, depending on whether or not you use the fractional shares. Um, and you also have different order types for the sell if you want to use more sophisticated order types like the limit order, trailing stop, etc. Again, I never use these, so that's going to be a topic for another video. I'm just going to click review and then I'm going to swipe up to sell my share. And just like that, I sold my share of Ford stock for $8.98. So I actually lost two pennies holding on to that stock. Your goal is to make money when you sell. So you'd want to buy Ford for like $9 a share and sell it for maybe $10. That would mean that you made $1 of capital gains while holding on to that stock. So that is how you sell a share of stock on Robinhood. Now I want to go ahead and show you how to purchase an option on a stock. So now what I want to show you guys is how to purchase an options contract through Robinhood. And again, as I mentioned earlier, options are a high risk type of investment where the majority of people who buy them lose all of their money. So I want to encourage you to do your own research before trading options or trading any different assets out there. Uh, because it's the potential to lose money here with options is very high and you should be familiar with that before purchasing. But that being said, if you've already decided that you want to buy options and you're just looking for the step-by-step -step instructions, let me show you how to do that here. Now we are in after hours already here because it just turned to be four o'clock. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be able to purchase an option on Ford stock right now, but I'm going to show you how I would do that anyway. 
um, just so you guys are aware of the process. Again, as I mentioned earlier, options is something you have to get enabled on your Robinhood account, and you would request permission or request access to options, and then you'd fill out a questionnaire, which basically explains to Robinhood what your trading experience is, and if they deem you um, educated and informed enough for options trading, they will activate this on your account. That being said, though, I'm going to click on the trade button here, and we're going to look at buying some options on Ford stock. Now, the only thing I ever trade on Robinhood is call options, which means I think that the stock is going to go up in the future. Um, if I was trying to bet against the stock, I would purchase something called a put option. I only ever do calls. I've never done a put option. Maybe at some point I would, but I don't get into covered calls, any of these more sophisticated options types. I'm not an expert at options, so I'm not going to talk about those because there are experts out there that will help you understand these more sophisticated options types. So for now, let me show you what the process would be for purchasing a call option on Ford stock. So the first thing you have to decide is when you want that option contract expiration date to be, because typically speaking, the further out that date is, the higher the option premium is for purchasing that option. So I always typically look to buy calls that are going to expire in about a three to six month window because that gives me a good period of time where, uh, you know, if, if I made a bad decision in the short term, there's more time for hopefully that stock to change in price in a favorable direction. That way I don't lose money. But I actually don't really like Ford stock and so buying an option on them, this is kind of stupid, but I'm just going to show you for demonstration purposes here. So if I truly did believe that Ford stock was going to climb higher in the next six months, which I honestly have no idea, I don't, I, it's a total gamble because I don't actually like Ford, but I would look to buy a call option six months out in the future, which would put us around June. So I'm going to go into the June 18 call options and see what the different prices are. And then you're going to look at how much that stock would have to go up for you to be at break even with that option covering the cost of your premium. So for example, we see here that the share price is currently $9. And if I were to buy a $10 call on Ford, that would mean that I'm paying a 63 cent premium. So my actual cost for that option is going to be 100 times that 63 cents because options are always in uh, orders of 100 contracts. So let's say, for example, I want to buy that $10 call. That means that in order for me to break even, Ford stock has to come up to $10.63 per share or go up 18.11%. Who knows if that's going to happen? Probably not. But anyways, let me go ahead and pick that one and just make that purchase. But as you're going to see here, if we're looking at call options, um, you know, the more that the stock has to go up in that period of time, the, the, the less likely it is to happen. And as a result, that option premium is lower and lower. So you can kind of decide whether or not you want to go for an option that's near the money or one that's a total long shot bet that's going to be cheaper. But if it does end up going up to that price level, you might make a lot of money. So I'm going to just purchase a $10 call on Ford. I don't even know if I can right now because the market is closed, but we're going to put in an order for one contract and it's going to cost me $63 because it's technically speaking 100 different contracts at 63 cents a piece. So let me click review and then submit and we'll see if the order closes. And uh, it did actually, it closed. So I did just purchase, or no, I'm sorry, it's queued. So it's because the market is closed. Um, I wasn't able to actually place this order. So it says right here, your limit order placed at 4.04 p.m. on January 8th, 2021 will be sent at the start of the next trading session. So there's no extended trading hours for options, unfortunately, but you can trade stocks during extended hours on Robinhood. So I actually am going to cancel this because it's Friday. I don't know what Ford stock is going to do over uh, the whole weekend here and then what it's going to open at on Monday. So I'm going to close this right out and cancel that order. But that is how you would place a call option purchase on Robinhood. Unfortunately, since I wasn't able to buy it, I can't show you how to sell it, but I'll probably do another video just on options trading with Robinhood at a later date. 
So now I'm gonna show you how to purchase cryptocurrency with Robinhood. But before I do that, it is important to understand that one of the big differences between Robinhood and other exchanges out there for purchasing crypto is that Robinhood does not allow you to send or receive cryptocurrency in and out of your portfolio. And the reason behind this is because Robinhood is going to keep track for you what your capital gains are on your cryptocurrency. That way they can report this to the IRS and you can pay your applicable taxes. Well, the problem is if people are able to send and receive crypto in and out of that account, it would be impossible to keep track of that cost basis and you would have to keep track of it on your own. So in order to simplify that process, Robinhood restricts you from moving crypto in and out of that account. Something you need to be aware of before you put a bunch of money into cryptocurrency. Uh, and it's up to you to make that decision of whether or not you're comfortable with being unable to move your cryptocurrency in and out of the account. That being said, guys, I'll show you how to do it, assuming that you are comfortable with that and you want to buy some Bitcoin or other supported cryptocurrency regardless. So first of all, in order to find cryptocurrencies that are supported, you're going to have to go to the search tab and then under popular lists, click on crypto. And if that's not showing up for you, just type in crypto and then it's going to show you what cryptocurrencies are available. But I'm going to go ahead and click on that and show you what cryptocurrencies are available. And they have um, a couple of different ones here. The only thing that I would ever purchase is Bitcoin personally, and, and that's just my viewpoints on crypto myself. So let me click on Bitcoin and I'll show you how to purchase. So this shows you what it's been doing over the last week, last month, and holy smokes, it's been quite the rally here for Bitcoin. So let's say, for example, you want to join the party and get in on it you're going to click the green buy button at the bottom and you're going to type in what dollar amount in us dollars you want to put into this cryptocurrency so right now you're going to be paying the price of about thirty nine thousand dollars per bitcoin but most people don't have that much money to buy a whole coin so you're going to buy a small amount of a coin so i'm going to do one hundred dollars worth just for demonstration purposes and then shortly after i'm going to sell it that way you're aware of how to actually sell cryptocurrency on Robinhood as well. So that being said, I'm going to buy $100 worth. It's going to be about 0 0.00254 Bitcoin. So we're going to click review. And then here we are with the agreement that we have to uh, accept before we purchase crypto. So what's important to understand is that when you're buying stocks and ETFs with Robinhood, you are insured under SIPC insurance, which covers you in the event of theft of cash, theft of assets, anything like that. So if somebody stole that money or Robinhood went insolvent, you are covered under SIPC insurance. The issue with crypto is that there's no federal insurance policy um, insuring your crypto assets. So Robinhood does have a private insurance policy and they also store them offline, the majority of the cryptocurrencies in cold wallets. However, in the event that um, there was theft of cryptocurrency from this exchange and that insurance policy was fully exhausted, you are potentially running the risk here of losing the money you have invested in cryptocurrency since there is no federal insurance. So that's why we have to review this agreement and accept it before we are able to actually purchase cryptocurrency on the app. Obviously, guys, you're going to want to read that even though I just skipped it, but um, I, I know the risks already because I've written about this at length. Anyways, now I'm going to swipe up and submit my order and purchase Bitcoin through Robinhood. So I just bought my Bitcoin on Robinhood. Now, if I click done, you will see that listed here. And if I go back home now, you'll see that I have a little bit of Bitcoin under the cryptocurrencies section. Now I'm going to show you how to actually sell your cryptocurrency. That way down the road, when you decide to sell it, hopefully for a profit, you'll know how to go about that. So what you're going to do to sell the cryptocurrency is pretty simple. You look at your homepage and you click on the cryptocurrency that you own in your portfolio. And then you're going to click on the green sell button. Now, once you do that, you put in the dollar amount that you're looking to sell of the total value of your crypto. So right now, my total value is $99.69 to sell. And you have to decide how much you want to sell. So I'm just going to do $50 worth and that is going to sell $50 of my Bitcoin and put that back into US dollars. At this point, you click the review button and then you swipe up to submit that order. And just like that, in the snap of a fingers, guys, we sold 
a portion of my Bitcoin and got a credit of $50 and three cents. So now if I click done, you will see that I have a lesser amount of Bitcoin in my portfolio and a larger cash balance. So that is how you would actually sell cryptocurrency on Robinhood. It's the same process for any cryptos that are supported. Um, and obviously the goal here is to buy low and sell high. So if you're looking to make money trading cryptocurrency with Robinhood, the goal is to buy it at a lower price and sell it for a higher price down the road. However, Bitcoin prices and crypto prices have been speculative in the past. So it is a higher risk asset. And that's something you should understand before actually trading cryptos yourself. So now that you guys understand how to actually purchase stocks, options, crypto and different assets on Robinhood and how to sell them, I want to cover a couple of different features and tools available on Robinhood that you may want to be aware of as a new user. And the first one is something called Robinhood Cash Management. So with your Robinhood account, if you open up an account with them, you're going to open a taxable brokerage account or a margin account. And this depends on whether or not you want to borrow money to invest with. The majority of people, the answer is going to be no, but that's something you have to decide on your own when opening the account. But most people are just going to open a cash account where any money that they're investing with is their own money and they're not using borrowed money. But that being said, they also offer a different online savings account called Robinhood Cash Management, which is totally separate from the brokerage account. Now, with that cash management account, you're going to get a couple of different things. First of all, it currently pays 0.3% APY which is about six times higher than the national average, which is 0.05% APY. So if you're looking to maximize the interest from your savings, this may be an option to explore. It's also FDIC insured through their custodial bank up to $1.25 million. And you have full flexibility here for doing direct deposit, paying bills, and they also offer a virtual Robinhood debit card if you wanna use the checking account as well. And you will have fee free withdrawals from over 75,000 different ATMs. I don't personally use cash management myself. I use a different account for my online savings. So that's not something that I use, but I wanted you guys to be aware of it in case it's something you're interested in. And the other advantage here too, is that if you have your money with Robinhood cash management, it's very easy to move money from cash management over to your Robinhood investment account to actually buy and sell assets. The next thing I wanna show you is more of the research tools and data available within the app if you're simply looking to find investments and you don't necessarily know what you're looking to buy. So we just typed in cryptocurrency from our last example, but I'm gonna clear that out because I wanna show you the popular lists at the top. The popular lists is a collection of stocks or ETFs within a certain category. So for example, we have one called technology. If you're looking to buy tech stocks, for example, you might click on one of these popular lists to get ideas for potential investments. So if I click on technology, you can see that it offers 819 different stocks here related to tech. So through this list functionality here, you're able to see a number of different technology stocks currently available on Robinhood. There's also a lot of different lists here. You have cannabis stocks, daily movers, crypto, 100 most popular. You can look at upcoming earnings if you're looking to place a bet on a stock that's gonna be reporting earnings soon all kinds of different stuff you can do with these lists. If you scroll down further, they have a good news feed, which is gonna show you relevant news related to the stock market. And then one of my favorite things to look at is the top movers for the day to see what stocks are moving up or moving down the most. Now, that being said, let's say you're looking to do some research on a given stock that you want to invest in. There are a couple of good research tools on Robinhood. So let's say, for example, you were looking at purchasing some Apple stock. Well, what you would do is type in the search bar Apple or the symbol, which is AAPL. Then you're going to go ahead and click on that stock. And I want to show you what information you have available to you here. First of all, you can look at a basic price chart to get an idea of the price movement over uh, set periods of time. And if you're somebody who relies on technical stock analysis, you simply click this button and it's going to show you a candlestick chart instead. After that, you get statistics here about trading volume, 52 week high, 52 week low, dividend yield and different things like that. Then we have the news feed with relevant information and news surrounding that company that has just come out. 
After that, you have analyst ratings, which shows you what Wall Street analysts think of this stock. So in particular, looking at Apple here, 58% view it as a buy, 33% view it as a hold, and 10% view it as a sell. So for free, everyone out there for many stocks is going to see this section here that has a little bullish and bearish thesis on the stock. So for example, the bullish perspective is why people think the stock is going to go up. And the bearish perspective is why people think the stock may go down. Now, this is a very short, simple explanation. If you want a longer one, you can unlock research reports from Morningstar um, by signing up for Robinhood Gold for $5 per month. That's going to get you a couple of different perks as well. You get larger instant deposits. You're also going to get level two market data, which is going to show you more uh, buy and sell orders and give you a better idea of uh, what that stock is going to be trading at at an instant point in time. And it's also going to give you access to margin trading if you want to invest with borrowed money. But to me, the biggest advantage is if you want to get those Morningstar research reports, you'll get much more in-depth information about that company to conduct your research. After that, if we scroll down more, we get a earnings calendar or an earnings chart that shows us whether or not uh, Apple has been beating, meeting, or falling below earnings expectations, lists, and then we have suggested stocks based on what people own as well when they also buy Apple. There's also history here, which shows you guys uh, that I have owned Apple in this, in this portfolio in the past. Uh, so if you've owned a stock in the past, that's going to show up down here. There's an about section that tells you more about Apple. And then, of course, you have the trade button if you want to purchase or sell your shares. But there is a lot of great research tools right here within Robinhood. However, if you're looking for more advanced stuff, uh, you may find you have to utilize other brokerages out there for advanced trading tools, uh, paper trading simulators, and different things like that. So it has a lot, but some may find it is limiting in terms of the features that they may be looking for. And so you might have to look elsewhere for more sophisticated tools um, and research things like that. So now I wanna show you guys how to set up a watch list on Robinhood. So let's say for example, you're just getting started with investing and you wanna keep an eye on a couple of different stocks or funds, but you're not quite ready to pull the trigger. What you're gonna do is scroll down here to the lists section, and then you're going to create a new list, and then you're going to give it a name and set an icon. So I'm gonna call this one Stocks I Am Watching, and then I'm going to set an icon here, um, and it looks like you have a couple of different options. So let me do like the, the monkey emoji, cause that's kind of funny. So there we have a new list called Stocks I Am Watching, and now I'm going to add stocks to that list. So let's say, for example, I'm keeping an eye on Tesla, Microsoft, and Netflix. I'm going to add those three stocks now. So you would simply type in the name of the stock and click the plus icon. That adds that to my watch list. Do the same thing now with Microsoft. Add that. And then I'll do the same exact thing here with Netflix as well and add that to my watch list. So now if I click the X, I now have created a watch list of Netflix, Microsoft, and Tesla. And you can also sort this by symbol, price, and percent change day to day. So that is how you would create a watch list if you're looking to keep an eye on a number of different investments. Now, also guys, you will find this messages tab here on Robinhood, which is just giving you notifications. So when you sell or buy a stock or earn a dividend or anything like that, it's gonna show up over here on the messages tab. And then finally, all the way to the right, where you have the person icon is going to be your settings. Um, in here, you can invite friends if you wanna earn more free stocks. Uh, you can take a look at your different balances and get an idea of your total asset allocation between cash, um, crypto, and stocks and options. It shows you your instant deposit limits, pending deposits, different things like that. And it will also give you an idea here um, if you are utilizing margin, whether or not you have a healthy amount of deposits or if you're at risk for a margin call, but it's a little bit above and beyond the scope of this video. You can also transfer, as you saw, that's where you transfer money in and out of Robinhood from into your bank account. Uh, you also can set up auto transfers here if you wanna do this on a regular basis. Uh, under statements and history, this is where you're going to get recent history in terms of your buy and sell orders. This is also where you would go to get your tax documents and monthly account statements. 
Um, and then other than that, you have your settings if you want to turn on and off Robinhood Gold, um, set up subscriptions, and just change different settings within the app. The last thing I want to show you guys is how to turn on drip or dividend reinvestment. So if you do end up buying stocks that pay dividends, assuming you have fractional shares turned on, which you have to turn on when you actually purchase that stock by purchasing in dollar increments rather than whole shares, if you have fractional shares turned on, you can also do dividend reinvestment for free, which is going to allow you to reinvest dividends in $1 increments back into the issuing stock. So in order to do that, guys, what you're going to do is click on the investing tab and you're going to scroll down and you're going to see where you have dividend reinvestment disabled. All you would do is click on enable dividend reinvestment. I don't have any dividend stocks in this portfolio, so I'm going to uh, skip that for now, but that is how you would go ahead and do that. So anyways, guys, there you have it. That is a step-by-step -step overview of how to buy stocks on Robinhood and also pretty much probably answers all the other questions about how this app works for a complete beginner. Uh, like I said, if you want to support me for putting this video together and you're opening up a Robinhood account for the first time, feel free to use my link below and basically at zero additional cost to you, it puts a little bit of extra money in my pocket and allows me to make more helpful videos like this on YouTube. So again, that is never expected, but always appreciated. Uh, and I am affiliated with Robinhood. Um, if you guys found this video to be helpful, please drop a like and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. And also feel free to leave me a comment with your thoughts and feelings about Robinhood or any questions that you may have or topics for future videos. But thank you so much for tuning in guys. And I hope to see you in the next video and happy investing.